There's a lot to learn about Mid Journey and maybe I can help you out with these 12 tips. First, is it possible to generate consistent characters? One day, it probably will be, but for now, no. It's not, I wish it was. Even with the amazing remix feature, it is not possible to get the same character in different scenes. However, there are some little tricks to keep in mind that might help you out. There are about six things you can do. Write these down somewhere so you don't forget. The first is to use a celebrity's name. This will help keep the face and anatomy consistent. The second is to choose a very simple outfit. I'm talking blue jeans and white t-shirt. And the third thing you can do is to specify an artist. That is the basis. The next three are things you can add to your prompt that may help you find what you're looking for. The first is the phrase character design. Not completely necessary, but still helpful for getting characters with a simple background. Or you could try the phrase character sheet. This will give you a very distinctive look and even a place to leave notes on the page. The third thing you can add to your prompt is the phrase different panels. I got this tip from Gallery432 on YouTube. I recommend using four panels when using two by three and six panels when using three by two. And you can also try the phrase different dynamic poses after mentioning the panels. But wait, there's more. Once you find a picture you like, I recommend hitting the variation button. Make sure remix is turned off, and this will give you four more images that closely resemble the one you chose. The point here is that you'll have even more variety for the same consistent character. And the last thing you need to remember is that creating a consistent character is going to require some post-processing work on your part. You can accomplish a lot in Photoshop after using the tips I just outlined. Number two, ever feel like mid-journey just isn't giving you what you want or maybe you don't know what you want but you know what you're getting isn't it you gotta introduce some chaos into your prompts the chaos value will bring variety into your initial generations where each of the four images will almost look nothing like each other almost as if you wrote four different prompts use it by putting dash dash chaos followed by a number between zero and a hundred the higher the number the more chaos you unleash onto the world hot tip number one use the phrase golden hour in your prompts you'll You'll get some awesome pictures at sunset, super beautiful stuff. And if you like these tips, consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on future videos. You ever wonder how you're going to describe a picture you want to make? This won't take the words out of your head, but if you have a reference image, use Clip Interrogator. This website will let you upload a picture and an AI will describe it for you. You can then take those words and prompt them in a generator. It's actually unreal. Is it perfect? No, but it is cool. And although you have to wait in line for your turn, it's free to use. I think you can even download the script and run it locally. Tip number four you want to know the greatest prompt ever sticker art is the greatest prompt ever two extra tips try including white background or black background and also try this with niji journey the anime version of mid journey dash dash niji after your prompt some of the coolest and prettiest pictures i've ever seen tip number five if you know you're going to be using a certain aspect ratio for the foreseeable future make sure you add it as a suffix to save yourself time hit forward slash and then prefer suffix and this will Will let you add anything to the end of your prompt. Like I said, this is perfect for aspect ratios, but you could also include like a chaos value or a stylized value as well. This way, all you need to worry about is writing your prompts. The rest will be taken care of for you. Tip number six. Do you need help organizing your pictures? I know you probably do. But did you know you can make collections on the Mid Journey website? And it's awesome because you can filter it by prompt and have the folder automatically fill it for you. You gotta try this out. I highly recommend it. It helps keep things quite organized. Hot tip number two. Using the word anthropomorphic might be the best way to get anything with human-like features. I'm talking a clock to a leopard. And if you like these type of videos but would prefer a more structured approach to learning AI art, maybe you'd be interested interested in a beginner course made by my friend Graham. It's currently on sale at a really great price. You can find the link in the description below. Tip number seven, how do you bring up an old picture in Discord? Well, it starts by going to the website and for some of your pictures, you can just hit show in Discord, but that won't work for all of them. So the best way to do it is to find your picture on the website and then copy the job ID. Now in Discord, you hit forward slash show and then paste the job ID. This will bring up your picture to the front of your your feet. Tip number eight, 
what is the best way to write a prompt? Let me know in the comments below. Some of you will say just write everything and space it out with commas. Others will say you have to use multi-prompts to get what you want. I won't argue with what you like the most, but I want to share the differences and a good way to think about it. So multi-prompting is like dividing a prompt into fractions, whereas using a comma means the prompt will be read and generated more as a whole. Let me explain. Say you want to see a dog drawn by two different artists together. You can write it as dog, double colon, Van Gogh, double colon Bob Ross. But that actually means your prompt is split into three things. 33% dog, 33% Van Gogh, and 33% Bob Ross. That might be what you're looking for. But if you wrote dog, comma, Van Gogh, comma, Bob Ross, it is 100% a dog drawn by Van Gogh and Bob Ross. You see the difference? What you use is up to you, but that's how you should think about your approach to prompting. And that breakdown was helped by my friend, highly educated trucker. So thank you for that. Tip number nine, here's a little philosophical tip for you. Start small. It is way easier to add things to a very basic prompt than it is to take away words from a very complicated prompt. Along that same train of thought, it's way easier to figure out which words are more powerful when you add them slowly. Likewise, it's almost impossible to know which words affected the picture of a long prompt. This is also a bit of a follow-up, but tip number 10 is to skew shorter rather than longer when it comes to overall prompt length. I'm not saying long prompts are bad. Sure, you can write a bunch of stuff and Midjourney will create a beautiful picture for you. But like I said earlier, it's hard to know which words contributed to that picture. And also, Midjourney will tend to ignore some of the words near the end of a longer prompt. Put the most important words near the beginning. Hot tip number three. It can be a little frustrating when one button can perform two different tasks. When Remix is turned off, the V buttons create variations. However, with Remix turned on, the V buttons now let you edit your prompt using the created picture as a foundation. So you can type in forward slash remix. This will come up as prefer remix, but it works the same. This will toggle between generating remixes and normal variations. And this is way quicker to do than going through your settings. I use this trick all the time. I hope it helps you too. And speaking of remix, tip number 11 is something fun that you can try. I don't know how long it will be possible for. And I kind of mentioned this in my last video, but have fun while you can. Bear with me. We're going to go step by step. So you're going to generate a picture on version four then you're gonna hit upscale on one of the images you like. On that upscale, you're gonna hit beta upscale redo. This is going to use a version three upscaler and it's going to make your picture look worse, probably. But we're not done, there are two more steps. Now you're gonna hit the remaster button under the beta upscale. Next is the final step. You're gonna make sure remix is turned on and you're gonna hit the V button under the remaster. This is where you're gonna change the prompt. Erase the dash dash test and dash dash creative from the end of it and add dash dash V4. This is going to change the picture back to the newest algorithm and the results are interesting to say the least. Basically, you're going from V4 to V3, you're gonna take the scenic right out around version 3 and then transfer back to version 4. Simple, right? Tip number 12. If you're ever scrolling through your feed and for some reason it takes you to the bottom of the page, instead of scrolling back up, there's an easy fix. Click on the prompt above the picture and it will automatically scroll you back to where the picture came from. This will save you a lot, a lot of time. Those are all the tips I have for you today. If I missed any, let me know. I hope you're doing well. Take care and I'll see you next time. Peace.